Welcome, I'm David Geiger. Congress is moving forward on getting farm workers more options. The House passed the Farm Workforce Modernization Act last week in a vote of 247 to 174, with 30 Republicans siding with 217 Democrats. All Iowa Republican representatives voted against the bill, however, with Representative Cindy Axney voting in favor. The act gives farm workers in the U.S. without legal documents a way to get legal status. It also updates the H-2A Temporary Worker Visa Program in wages and working conditions. Several agriculture groups released statements supporting the act, notably the National Milk Producers Federation and the National Farmers Union. China may need to continue buying U.S. corn. For years, weather in China has made growing corn hard. China is the number one producer of rice, wheat, potatoes, and other commodities, but it trails U.S. corn production by 42%. Corn in China set records in 2015, but since then, it's been too wet or too hot in its major corn-producing regions. Looking at the next season, successful farming says it looks to be too dry again. And Chinese farmers are less likely to have yield-producing hybrids U.S. farmers have. Markets seeing red to start up the week. Our analyst Jamie Kowaki has more. Going to have to wait and see how the exports go this week, but I expect them to be kind of slow again as we wait to see what happens down in South America. Are we going to see another strike this week in Argentina or not, and how that plays out? But I really think the market is still waiting on next week. But I look for the market to remain range bound up until then. Over to the uh, corn market, uh, five lower on the old crop roughly, two lower on the new crop. Just seeing some liquidation there uh, with the spreads. Did have a couple big sales reported last week to China, but the funds are aggressively long. Up over 370,000 contracts coming into this week. For the same as beans, I look at the market to remain range bound and still look for the funds to defend their long positions uh, coming into the report. Over to the meat sector, uh, nice trade here. Got feeders up at 50 to 70, 80 cents a time, same as the fats. But the market looks pretty solid here so far this morning. And then look for another push back up to where we were kind of mid last week. Not new highs put in yet, but kind of go back up there and merge in that, that top end of the zone. Over to hogs, kind of a, a heavy liquidation type trade here at time this morning. We broke through a dollar in summer contracts and hit a lot of stops. And now the market is kind of stabilized a buck 80, buck 90 lower. The Colfax Sheep and Goat Auction on Saturday saw a sale of 451 head of sheep. Feeder lambs fetched the day's average price of $2.72 per pound, while fed lambs averaged $1.63 per pound. There were 91 head of goats at the auction, which saw a high average price ranging from $110 to $470 per head. Iowa feedlots had fewer cattle than last year. According to the National Agricultural Statistics Service, feedlots with more than 1,000 head in Iowa were down 6% to 630,000, while feedlots with fewer than 1,000 head were down 14% to 540,000. That's 1.1 million head down 10% in total from last March. Overall, placements in Iowa were down 20% from last year, and marketings were down 18%. And that's all I have for the Agribusiness Report today. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next time. We have our stories online. Head over to who13.com, click news, and then agribusiness.